Question 1, Girls That Gave the Nice Guy a Chance, How Did It Go? Let's see the comments. Comment 1, He burned my stuff, because he loved me too much. Comment 2. Oh boy. He was emotionally unavailable. Literally valued material objects over human life, to an extreme. Openly told me he loved his car more than me. He hated animals. He hit my sister for using his toothpaste. And that was the end of that. Comment 3, he seemed great. We hit it off and worked through some early issues, he ignored me for days at a time to play video games with his friends, not even a text of hello or sorry, I'm busy. His mom was diagnosed with cancer about a year in, and I moved in with him so I could spend as much time as possible with her and support him as she was terminal. Eight months after she passed away, a friend of mine found his profile on the dating app we met on, currently active with a paid subscription, same exact profile I met him with. When confronted, he said he was just trying to make friends, and that I couldn't count it as cheating because nobody ever messaged him back. We tried to work things out, but he was found a month later on the same dating site, by the same friend. I wish I could say that was the end, but I gave him another chance. Over the next year, he became the most hateful, miserable man I've ever met and I could no longer mentally handle it. I moved out. Comment 4 it went really well at first until like one week into the relationship he kept saying how much he loves me and how he can't wait to move in together and wouldn't let me hang around my other male friends. He wouldn't stop texting me and would never leave my side it got really annoying but he didn't stop until I broke up with him, called me a fat whore who no one could love and he's happy that I used to cut myself and said I should start again. That was very much a fun relationship. Comment 5, decided beating me was the way to go. Comment 6, I got stabbed. Twice. In the chest. Question 2, what's the moment where you realized that your friend is a terrible person? Let check the highlighted comment. Comment 1, she lied to me about having cancer. We don't talk anymore. Comment 2, I found out her and her family took pictures of strangers they thought were ugly and hung them up on their fridge slash posted them on social media to laugh at them. Insecurities bring out the worst in people. Comment 3, when they and the rest of their friends ditched me at Disney World. Comment 4, when she hit her cat and told me she could treat her cat how she wants and that my duty as her friend is to only follow her and not question anything. Comment 5, when she was rude to a homeless person sitting inside the train station. We live in Canada, and it was winter, and the train stations are heated and this man was just minding his own business not being loud. Not that, that would make it okay, but like literally chilling and she just went off on him and wanted to call the peace officers to have him removed, I stopped her and told her to stop being so rude and to leave him alone. And then I ditched the hangout and went home and blocked her on everything. Next question, what do girls never tell guys? Here are the comments. Comment 1, how much blood comes out and the jelly-like stuff during our periods. Comment 2, how painful taking out a dry tampon is. Feels like your insides are being scraped out. Comment 3, when I wear my hair in certain ways it means I've not gotten the chance to wash it in a while. Comment 4, specifically, what was discussed in the bathroom. Comment 5, we remove hair a lot more than just our legs, bikini, and armpits. It differs for us all. Stomachs, sideburns, upper lip, chin, nose, nipples, chest, feet toes, arms. Pretty much anywhere men grow hair. We got it. Always great when it's just peach fuzz. But not always the case. Comment 6, our favorite bra doesn't get washed as much. Question 4, what do guys never tell girls? Comment 1, it wasn't silent and yes, I can smell it. Comment 2, I'm not hungry, I've just been holding in a fart for two hours, and my stomach's making weird noises. Comment 3, you have cheese at breath. Comment 4, just because I text, good night doesn't mean I go to sleep immediately. I just need some time alone. Comment 5, we're not scratching our balls, we're either adjusting them, getting them unstuck from our leg, or plain playing with them. Itchy balls require a pinch and twist. Comment 6, if you compliment me, I will think about it for the rest of my life. 
Question 5, Married People of Reddit, What do you miss about being single? Comment 1, Things being where I left them. Comment 2, Just being alone and being able to do whatever I want. Comment 3, My own bed. Comment 4, Not having to justify myself to another adult if I'm getting takeout two days in a row. Comment 5, Not being beaten in my sleep by my wife. I bought a king-size bed so you could fight your dream ninjas on your side of the bed. Stay away from me. Please. Comment 6. The excitement of first dating someone you like. Question 6. Men of Reddit, what is your biggest insecurity as a man? Comment 1. I'm stuck career-wise, I don't know how to go about expanding my horizons beyond my current finance role. Comment 2, my fiancé makes more money than me and knows exactly what she wants to do with her life, career-wise. I do not know what I want to do because every job I have had I hate so much. Comment 3, career is a big one. Got a degree in business management and I'm close to being done with a master's in public administration. I have no idea what the best career path is going to be. I've got about five years of finance experience and I'm going on a year of managerial, not within finance. Health is another one. Dealing with MS sucks. I don't feel like I'll ever be as athletic as I used to be prior to the diagnosis. My left leg struggles after a while. Comment 4. I worry about not feeling emotion with the same intensity that other people do. It's hard to explain. Edit, I'm getting a lot more conversation than the zero I expect, so I'll try and clarify. I feel a full range of emotions regularly. I just see the way people react to same or similar things and don't think I've ever felt as intensely as they do. Comment 5, it's weird being single for a long period of time. Probably three quarters of the time I'm perfectly content and happy with where I'm at in my life, particularly in regards to my marital status. But when so many people around me express what appears to be legitimate concern because it's been so long since they've met anyone I've dated like I'm some lonely sap about to shoot himself on any given weekend, it starts to make me a bit concerned. At this point, even my own kid is like, Dad, when you gonna get laid? In a slightly more respectable fashion. I'm also pretty sure it makes some people trust me less. There's this guy at work who makes it a point to tell me that gals who are, thus far, in the 16 to 20 year range are too young for me. As though because I'm single, I must want to fuck literally any vagina that gets within 10 feet of me. I'm in my 30s, for the record. I know 16 year olds are too young for me. So yeah, with new folks I avoid discussions about my current relationship status for as long as possible, and when I do share that I'm single I try to gloss over it with ah, I'm sure the right one's just around the corner or, when applicable, it's no big deal, I've got a date on Thursday, pretty sure this is the one. I don't know, it's a weird thing to be insecure about, but I guess in the end most insecurities are kinda weird in my experience. Comment 6, it's a bit shallow, but my own sexual desirability. I'm not attractive, was never outgoing or sociable, I smoke, and my general indifference to pretty much everything means my opinions are middling at best or I dither on making decisions that I don't consider to be particularly urgent. That being said, I have somehow been in a relationship with all those traits for the last 10 years. However, despite that, I'm the only one who has shown any interest in out-sex life. I've brought it up a few times, but nothing has changed and it's gotten to the point that when they do initiate for a change, I feel it's more out of feeling bad than it is because they actually want to. Don't get me wrong, I am eternally grateful that someone is at least willing to pretend to want to touch me, and I am more than happy to be a source of stability for them because I love them, but it'd be nice to know what it feels like to be wanted every once and a while.